And welcome back to Who'd Win. You'll notice I'm not outside anymore. The power came back on, so I can be inside again. Uh, and this Who'd Win comes to us from E. Demundo, or as it actually is pronounced, Edmundo. Come on, man, Edmundo. You know, who doesn't know Edmundo? Come on, Edmundo. Anyone know that reference? Edmundo! Uh, Ed, 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 anyone. Uh, he asked the question, or they asked the question, who would win the fight? Um, Red Hulk versus Atrocitus. Uh, they're both red. They both have some rage-based powers. Poppy, what you doing? What you doing? Stop scratching at that. You stop scratching at that. Uh, I get, I get, I, this is the second time this. I get interrupted by the phone. Now the dog's trying to claw at the chimney thing. Anyway, Red Hulk. Now, Thunderbolt Ross, who is the Red Hulk, can transform into the Red Hulk at will. He can actually constantly control his transformation back and forth between the Hulk and uh, Ross. Uh, Strength-wise, he has vast superhuman strength and can augment it through absorbing radiation, similar to as the Hulk gets stronger as the more he gets angry. Uh, he was strong enough to completely overpower and kill the Abomination with relative ease, who was stronger than a base form Hulk. Defeated the Odin Force powered Thor in a 1 1 fight, but that was without preparation on Thor's part, and he beat him pretty. Thor beat him later on pretty easy. Punched out the Watcher and killed the Elder of the Universe in a fight with the original Hulk he described as hitting with the force of a nuclear explosion. Uh, he has the ability to leap vast distances. Uh, he left out of the Earth's atmosphere, honestly, and only required Mjolnir to cover the rest of the distance to the moon. Uh, regenerative uh, healing factor possesses a healing factor similar to that of Green Hulk, although it's noticeably less powerful, as it took a considerable period of time just to restore the, his sight after Wolverine slashed his eyes. So, while he does have a healing factor, it's not Hulk-level healing factor. As he, aging is retarded, um, retarded aging, uh, does not age because of his healing factor that regenerates his cells, and he is powered by gamma and cosmic energy. But when he's Ross, he still ages. He has superhuman stamina, goes without saying. Superhuman durability, goes without saying. Superhuman speed, goes without saying. Um, he once moved too fast for an unprepared Iron Man to reach. Gamma radiation emission. Okay, now here's an interesting one. He's constantly giving off gamma radiation. The rate of emission is increased by the anger he gets. The radiation sometimes burns what even Ross touches, while and at high and at high levels makes Ross appear to be on fire. If Ross emits too much radiation, he overheats and can explode in immense levels, which could be dangerous for his opponents and his allies. Energy absorption. Ugh, absorption. Red Hulk is capable of absorbing energy. He said in the confrontation against Hulk and his def and uh, his defenders that he absorbs energy, more gamma, but that he has a real taste for cosmic power. He has absorbed and taken for himself the Silver Sur Surfer's power cosmic, leaving him powerless on the ground while Red Hulk flew away on his board. However, overuse of this power left Hulk unable to revert to his human form. Uh... For a brief time, his mind controlled form uh his mind controlled the form of Zax, and hence commanded Zax's power bolt. That doesn't matter in this fight. And uh we're not doing the Venom Ghost Rider thing because that was a very minor uh moment. Uh so that's Red Hulk. Red Hulk's pretty beastly, but Red Hulk also has, you know, limitations. He's not as strong as normal Hulk. Um and by any, like, pure physical power. He actually has more abilities than Normal Hulk does because of his actual power and gamma absorption, uh, his power absorption capabilities and energy absorption capabilities. But overall, he's not as strong as Hulk is, physically speaking. Uh, then we go into Atrocis, who is the leader of the Red Lantern Corps. Now, a Red Lantern Ring is powered by the Red Light of Rage. You must feel a great deal of rage to be selected as a Red Lantern. Problem is... The ring is pretty much a parasite. It it is it corrupts your body and pretty much replaces your heart. It is your heart. You lose your ring, you lose your heart, and you die. You are also constantly you are also constantly coughing up a acidic red vomit like energy. Um, that that is corrosive even like Green Lantern's uh, constructs, but. Some Red Lantern, and most Red Lanterns are just so overpowered by rage, they're just rage beasts. However, there are Red Lanterns who have, who, while fueled by their rage, are not controlled by their rage. They are in control of their rage, but they are still enraged. Uh, Atrocis is one of these individuals. He has overcome the, the uh, negative, uh, still has, has had his heart replaced by the ring. Uh, but he has overcome the negative side effects of the ring in terms of like just being a rage beast. And now he can create constructs, things along those lines. He can also be fueled, not just by his own rage, but other people's rages as well. So the uh, the angrier someone gets in the area, the stronger his effects become. So, 
who wins in this? Uh, and obviously durability and strength on the part of any other Lantern Corps, really, because in terms of the strength of a Lantern Corps, in terms of the actual like strength of constructs, all that, it's it's kind of it's all based on the individual, like Green Lantern Welch, how strong is your will? Red Lantern Rage, how strong is your rage? The Green, uh, Blue Lantern Hope, how strong is Hope? So you know that's that's how that works. However, I mean, how does this fight break down? Let's say the Red Lanterns in, are in a crossover and invade uh, Marvel and Atrocitus, you know, is wreaking havoc, trying to find and recruit more rage and rage inducers for his core, uh, but he gets smacked down by Thunderbolt Ross. Like, yeah, you're in my town now, boy. Now I'm going to ask you one time. Get out of here. Like, yeah, the Red Lord of Rage will consume you all, and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, Red Light of Rage, huh? And just, just between you and me, I think I pull off the rate of the the color a little better. And then he just charges, and you know he smacks right into the red land, or right into Atrocis, and the fight commences. Down pure physicality, Ross thrashes Atrocis or Atrocitus. Atrocitus is physically strong. In fact, he's probably much stronger than your average individual, uh, at least by human standards. But he's not, at least not without uh, his lantern core augmentation. He's not as strong as a Hul as any of the Hulks by damn. But his ring does give him enough durability, like a minor shield. Uh, he can absorb a lot of the uh, uh, blows, but it still hurts. And Tross is like, you know, he just starts firing, like, energy construct, energy blasts at him, corrosive energy. You know, Ross is kind of, like, getting out of the way, but he gets hit, and it actually burns him a little. It's like, what the hell is this? It's like, ah! It's like, fine! And then just, he kind of does, like, a Hulk thunderclap, just boom! But, you know, with the fact that his anger's up, He's more pissed off. He's emitting gamma. He's emitting more energy. So there's actual, like, firepower, like, at rage energy. In this case, yeah. Gamma, rage, fire energy in that smack. So it just, boom, and he gets smacks, and he gets thrown back. So now they collide again. The problem that's going to be in the long term of this fight is that the more, the angrier Ross gets, the more powerful Atrocitus is going to get. But Ross can also absorb radiation he can absorb energy to some degree uh, to multiple degrees question is can he absorb a lantern's energy well they're energy constructs um to be clear also let's uh is it it's energy absorption it's not radiation absorption so if it were radiation absorption that would be different i would actually say he couldn't absorb atrocity's power but it's energy absor absorption so where it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of I'm going to feed you, and you're going to feed me. So Atrocitus is going to fire more energy uh, while Ross couldn't initially absorb it. Now he's prepared for it. He's absorbing it back. But, you know, Atrocitus is just feeding off his rage. So it's just a lot of back and forth, back and forth. So their fight's just going to keep going on and on and on and on. Uh, I believe uh, that a, uh, a lantern ring, as long, uh, with the exception of like a green lantern wing, ring, um... Certainly, earrings like the Blue Lantern can be fueled by others' hope and keep being fueled. Red Lantern can keep being fueled by other people's rage and keep be going on instead of running out of a power. So, it's really who the hell is going to tire out in this fight first, or who is going to get the lucky shot off? Well, I think eventually it's going to be. I, I think the key factor is here who's got more experience now. Trostis probably has a lot of experience on the field, but he's not a close range. I mean, he probably is a bit of a close range fighter, but he's not a hand to hand fighter. He's you like create like an energy sword and attack things along the lines. Ross is a military man. Ross actually knows hand to hand ta uh, tactics, can use weaponry, things along those lines. So, uh, so he is he he has that benefit to him. Also, it's possible that Ross's rage just gets to the point. Where the ring actually decides, nope, I got a better candidate than Atrocitus. I don't know if it'd go that far, but it's possible. But ultimately, it's going to be get down to the fact that he leaps right at uh, Atrocitus, just kind of leaps him, just tackles him, and just lets loose or just so all of his rage at once. It just kind of explodes in front of Atrocitus' face. His ring does shield him uh, to some extent, but he does take a bit of damage from that. Now he's like, you, you, and then Beth, Ross is like, yeah, you, it's, then he lost, sees the ring, the ring's, uh, the ring kind of glowing a little bit, it's like, so this is the source of your power, it's like, the power, well, no, uh, basically he figures out, he's noticing the power's coming from him, he's like, yeah, let's see how well you handle without this thing, he's like, no, and Rich Ross is actually down, he's like, no, and they just, he just takes the whole finger off, it's like, ah, ah, and then, you know, Tross, this is just suddenly, it's like, oh, with my heart. And then, you know, Trostis just falls down dead. Just dead. <laughs> it's like, whoa, that 
that that went extreme fast. And then just looks at the rings, and then the ring just is a searching for a new source. And it's like now, uh, and now Ross isn't anywhere near as angry now, so he doesn't see Ross as a good pick. So, so yeah, hey, where you go? He's like, nope, no, you're not going anywhere. And the ring's trying to pull, and he's just like, nope, nope, can't let this get out. And they just crush the ring in his hand. So I think Red Hulk wins this because Red Hulk does have re both the lanterns have all Red lanterns have a level of regeneration thanks to the ring. However, Hulk has probably a uh, Red Hulk has a bit higher regeneration. An initial blow from Atrocis is going to hurt, but afterwards he'll notice it's his energy, so he'll just absorb the energy from there. He's just going to have greater stamina and far greater physicality than Atrocitus does. Now, the ring does augment Atrocitus to some levels. It does not augment him to Hulk levels, even though Red Hulk isn't the strongest of the Hulks. It does not augment him, uh, augment him to that level. So, ultimately... I do go Red Hulk, but there is a very real scenario where I think Retrosis wins. I think he could, you know, at one point getting close and just vomit acid right in front of his face. Well, it is energy to some degree, and he absorbs some of it. I think he basically just melt Ross's face off and, and then just deliver a fatal blow like to the heart or something like that. I think that's very, yeah, got it, finally. A very realistic scenario. So, but I, I would probably go... Because of the nature of these guys' powers, they're going to go back and forth with, like, absorption and power and things along those lines. But I'm going to go 80-20. I'm going to go 8 out of, eight, eight out of 10 for 80% of the time Red Hulk's going to win this fight. But what do you think? You think different than me? That's cool. Put in the comments below. I think Red Hulk stomps the whole time. I think Atrocitus stomps. Do you think he wins the whole time? Let me know. Put in the comments below. Thanks for watching, though. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. As always, if you want to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. I just ruled Wind Star Wars, Superhero Magic, What If, anything you can do on the channel. Put that in the comments below as well. I'll get to that at some point. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you next time.